What's going on? Have you ever wanted to build a live virtual cohort based online learning platform? My name's Chris Badgett. I'm a WordPress LMS entrepreneur. I'm the co-founder of the leading learning management system solution for WordPress called Lifter LMS. I've been in this industry for a decade and I've helped lots of people just like you get results faster. In this training, I'm gonna show you how to build a virtual cohort based live online learning environment from your WordPress website that you own and control. We're gonna create a course here that we're gonna launch four times a year. I'm gonna show you how to do it the fast and easy way so you can keep those groups of people uh, moving through the program that are in the same cohort and keep it all nice and organized. We're gonna combine the world's best learning management system solution, which is Lifter LMS. We're gonna use the events calendar uh, plugin to create the live virtual calendar to help people stay organized and get into the live classes. And then all you need to do is also have a Vimeo Pro account for hosting your videos and a Zoom account, just like I'm recording this video inside of right now to help you uh, deliver all the live training. All right, so here we are. We're gonna jump straight into the tutorial on how to build a live virtual cohort-based online learning website with WordPress. So this is a blank WordPress install. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump in the back here and I'm going to install the best learning management system for WordPress, which is called Lifter LMS. So I'm just gonna do a search here in the plugins for Lifter LMS. There it is, I'm gonna click install now and activate it. And here we're just gonna go through the quick setup wizard. We're gonna get started now. We're gonna install the required pages. We're gonna set up the e-commerce options. We're selling in US dollars and we're based in the United States. We're gonna click save and continue. We're gonna allow some tracking to improve the software. And I'm actually gonna install this sample course template right here. Uh, and this is gonna be our cohort based course that we're gonna build on that we can launch the same course with different groups of people four times a year. So I'm gonna click, I, I said I wanna install that template and I'm gonna select import courses. So while that's importing, what that's doing is it's setting up a sample course that we can build our model off of. So this is our sample uh, course template. Uh, before we get into it, we're actually gonna change themes. So I'm just gonna click update there. And I'm gonna go back into WordPress and under appearance, I'm gonna click on themes and I'm gonna install uh, the cadence theme. So you can do a search for cadence with a K or just look for it. it, looks like it's right here. I'm gonna click install now. And activate. And I'm gonna install these cadence starter templates. So this is just gonna give us, a, and we're gonna use the Gutenberg standard WordPress editor. So what this is gonna do is, this is just gonna give us a basic site that's already well designed for a course website to start with. So I'm gonna click this course template here. And remember, we're gonna be launching, I'm gonna go ahead and import that. It's gonna do what it needs to do. We're gonna be launching the same course four times a year in spring, summer, fall, and winter. So as that's coming in, uh, I'm just gonna let you know what we're gonna do next, which is we're gonna set up our calendar system for the live classes. So I'm gonna click finished and view our site. So you can see we've got a sample starter site to work with here. And next thing we're gonna do is go back into plugins, click add new. And there's this great plugin called the events calendar. So I'm gonna do a search for events and install now. This is the one by the events calendar. And I'm gonna click activate. So that is set up. I'm just gonna close these notices. 
and we'll come back to setting up our first live virtual training for the cohort in a moment. Uh, so next thing we want to do is let's just go ahead and take a look at the front end of our site. Um, I'm actually going to change the menu a little bit here. So in the menu, in appearance menus, oh, that was widgets. There's menus. Um, I'm actually going to remove this starter courses page and sales page here. And I'm actually uh, going to go into the screen options here. Make sure Lifter LMS is checked. Click Save Menu. And over here, I'm going to add the uh, the courses to the menu. So this is the courses page that Lifter LMS creates. So that's there. I'm going to click Save. And now when we visit our site, we can see that on the courses page, oh wait, there's the old courses page. Let me fix that. Uh, pages. I actually want to delete this page that came in with our sample site. And this page as well. So we just want this course catalog page that came from Lifter LMS. So I'm going to go to Appearance, Menus, make sure I get that on the menu. So not that one, we'll remove that. And then it's this course catalog when we want to add to the menu. And I'm just going to rename that courses. And I'm going to click save. Now when we view our site, we can see uh, the course catalog that, uh, the, or the course template that came in with Lifter LMS. So you can see this is a conversion optimized course page. So uh, I'm just going to go into this, the cadence settings and clean this up a little bit. So under appearance, customize. Under lifter LMS, this is one of the things that makes cadence fantastic is, is it adds a lot of features for lifter LMS specifically. So this is what's called the course archive here. Um, I'm not going to show the archive title. We'll just have our course there. And I think I'm good with that. And I'm just going to back out. And we're, we're going to go to the actual course page itself. So for the course sales page, for the course layout, uh, we're not going to show this uh, page title here. So we'll just turn that off. And then for the content style, we'll do the unbox style like that. So for a proper, you know, kind of full length, gorgeous course sales page. So we've got our settings saved there. And I'm going to go to our course. And what we're going to do is um, change the name so it makes sense. So this is going to be the... Uh, Spring Signature Course. We'll just call it a uh, signature signature course, and we'll do Spring 2022. So that's the name of the course, and for the featured image here, we're actually going to replace this image. with a spring picture. So I've got some pictures here. We'll do this one. This is our spring image. So this will just kind of help it, help make sense what we're looking at. So we're going to set the featured image and just make sure that's saved. Click view course. And in our course catalog, you can see here that we have the signature course, which we're launching in spring 2020. And if we look down here, 
in the pricing, you can see that it's a thousand dollars for the course. Um, and there's a payment plan option. So you can pay a thousand dollars for the course, or you can do 12 payments of a hundred dollars. And then there's a private coaching upsell for the course plus the private coaching for $10,000. So, uh, in order for this checkout flow to work, I'm just going to edit this page and in the cadence options, we'll make that normal width. So over here in the checkout screen, we're going to set up the Lifter LMS Stripe add-on so we can take credit card payments. So you can see we've got the manual payment gateway here. So there's a $10,000 checkout for the signature course in spring in 2020. So I'm just going to go ahead and upload the Lifter LMS Stripe add-on. So I'll click Add New. I actually downloaded it from LifterLMS.com. So if you don't have your Lifter LMS license yet, head on over to LifterLMS.com and you can check out the pricing. And then uh, there's individual add-ons made by Lifter LMS. They do a lot of different things. We've got a couple of bundles. And then there's the main e-commerce solutions like Stripe, which we're going to demonstrate today. I do recommend doing Stripe and PayPal together so you give your customers the most possible checkout options. But I've already got that plug in on my desktop, so I'm just going to upload it the old-fashioned way. So I'm in uploading the Lifter LMS Stripe add-on. And we'll activate it. Then over here in the Lifter LMS settings, under checkout, we want to go into Stripe, turn it on, and I'm actually going to put it in test mode here so that we can see what it looks like without officially setting it up with my Stripe API keys. And what this allows you to do is just basically test checkout uh, with a fake credit card. And then when you're ready, you just put in your, you, you set up a free Stripe account and they're going to give you something called an API key that you just plug in. And that's how you'll actually get paid the money that gets deposited directly into your bank account automatically. So if we're inside this course, you'll notice now when we go to check out, um, click and roll. And here's the payment processing of the credit card. So we've got the Stripe set up there. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up virtual delivery of some or all of the lessons. So if we go into the course curriculum here, you can see that down here, the course welcome. Uh, right now I have that set up as a video. So I'm just going to add the sidebar real quick here, and then we'll uh, we'll do the live virtual options. So let me back out there, appearance, widgets. So I'm just setting up the lesson sidebars. So right here to have the Lifter LMS course progress widget. So that's there. And we'll add the lessons widget lessons and we'll title that lessons and what you can see here make sure we saved our changes so we're saved there uh, now when we go inside of a course and go into a lesson, we should see the sidebar. So that's over here so that the student can track their progress and that sort of thing. Now you can use a learning management system like Lifter LMS to do, you know, video courses, but you can also do live virtual cohort based instructor led courses. So imagine instead of putting the video in here, maybe we'll end up putting a video in here. Uh, but what we want to do instead, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the video, is we're going to put in a, um, a link to join the 
virtual class, which we'll just use Zoom, which is what most of the world uses for for their um, for their virtual meeting software. And we got that set up, got that link installed. And then, you know, to make it easy, uh, let's say we're going to do this welcome on um, January. So let's call it May 1st, 2022. So you can see what we're doing is we're creating a live virtual meeting room. And if someone were to land on this lesson, um, you know, they got the link to join. But we also want to make it super easy for our, our students to get their calendars in order. That's why I recommend using the events calendar plugin here. So what I'm going to do here is uh, over in our plugins, we want to set up the events calendar so you can see we've got that installed we installed the free plugin the premium plugin is great and has more options but i'm showing how far you can go with the free version so you can see the settings and everything here um, but let's just jump right into it add a new event so what we were doing is um, setting up our uh, first lesson is going to be delivered live and it's going to be delivered live on May 1st, 2022 in this Zoom room. So we'll just call this course welcome is the name of the event. And then uh, we'll just put in some quick text here. And again, we'll put in the Zoom, not that. We'll put in our Zoom join link for our virtual classroom and link it up. And you can see uh, down here we have the, the actual settings here. So we're actually setting this up for spring 2022 for May 1st. And we'll just say that the venue name here is Zoom. And this class is going to go from, let's say, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And we'll go ahead and click Publish. And then what you can see is over here, We'll, do, we'll add it to our menu. I'm just going to go to Appearance Menus. And we're just going to add a link here to ourwebsite.com forward slash events. And then um, We'll title this menu item class calendar. Add to menu. So you can see we've got that on there. And while we're here, let's add a few more key lifter pieces like the student dashboard and the conditional sign in, sign out link. And we're going to click save menu. So now you can see we've got our class calendar here. So when we pull this up, we can see the upcoming class and we got the, uh, the month view. So if we were to fast forward over to May, you can see our event is popping up right here and we can click through to the individual event details. We can add this to our Google calendar which is super convenient. And so we've got that 
set up. And then the next thing we want to look at is when we look at our course, you can see how we've got our program. And imagine, if you will, that we're going to deliver all this training live. This is our signature program that we deliver as a live virtual cohort based online learning experience. And then essentially what we want to do is after this session is recorded live, we do that with the Zoom tool. And then what we want to do is upload that video into our Vimeo Pro account. So this is a uh, this is actually my daughter <laughs> uh, Hazel. Uh, we did a little cooking course together. But let's say uh, I uploaded my first uh, live virtual session and there's some people that couldn't make it live. I would take this content, go in to edit the lesson after the event has passed. And essentially, I would just delete that and now replace uh, that. Let's take a look at that. Oh. I think it's not embedding because I have some privacy restrictions on that one to not be able to. That's the, that's the beauty of Vimeo Pro is that you can restrict which, which websites can uh, have your video. So just for demonstration purposes today, I'm just going to grab a generic video that I know is not locked down. So let's take this one as an example. And we're going to go into our lesson put that in there, click update, view lesson. So you can see here, then we replace our live session uh, with the recording for the people that couldn't make it live. And then, you know, as people keep going through the course, uh, you know, the, the, all these lessons get populated with the recording that were in there. And so what happens here is, let me go back to the course and and uh, demonstrate for you uh, how to do the cohort-based part. So we're just using WordPress, a few choice plugins like the best LMS plugin, which is Lifter LMS. We're using the incredible events calendar plugin, and we're using the cadence theme. And then we have a few other tools like Zoom and Vimeo Pro, and that's all we need to build a virtual live cohort based online courses website with WordPress. But let's, let's get into the cohorts part. So this is our spring course. And let's imagine if you will, that uh, the time has passed and you know, perhaps, you know, this one's going and we want to start selling the other one, the next one, which uh, is the summer version. So this is the cool thing about, Lifter LMS. I'm just going to go into the back here and go to courses. It's, I'm just going to click this one button and clone this entire course. So I could clone the spring version or maybe I have like a templated version that I recycle and use over and over again. And I'm just going to start editing this one. So this one is actually going to be for uh, summer. And we'll just remove the word clone there. We'll click update and let's take a look at it. So it looks the same, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually change the image. So we'll add the summer version and we'll go ahead and click publish. So you can see here that um, we now have two courses, like this one's in process. And one thing we can do here on this one uh, so that nobody else buys it is we go into the course settings down here and under restrictions, um, we can have a course enrollment period. And let's say this one, you could enroll in um, like April, first through uh, April 30th, like the month before the first day of class. So that's updated. 
Um, so that's going to allow no more people to purchase it, even though it is still on the website. So at this time, we have both the spring version and the summer version on our website at the same time. But what happens after this one is completely done? Uh, so let me, uh, as an example, I'm just going to enroll myself in the course real quick here. So down in the bottom, um, I'm just going to enroll myself. And when I go to the front end of the website, imagine I had purchased it, but you can see how I've enrolled in it. And this course shows up on my dashboard. Again, I'm just going to tighten up the dashboard and the cadence design here to the normal width. Click update. So you can see how I'm enrolled in the signature course. So, and let's let's look at what that looks like uh, with a different user too. So I'm here, um, you know, down in the, the course content, you know, I can start working through the material um, and attending the live sessions, which the, the live sessions can also have, um, you know, certain dates where you can't get into them until a future date. So let's say on a drip setting that, you know, these, this lesson rolls out on um, uh, a certain date. Like in this case, this one rolls out on May 1st. So that's, that's there. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this link and open an incognito window. And you can see how somebody else would experience the site, not as a WordPress administrator. So they go to the courses page. And uh, in this case here, you know, they want to enroll in this course. They check it out. Looks awesome. And... Uh, there's a there's a future start date, so it's not available yet. So they, they can't quite get in. Um, but this one is an example. Since we didn't put a start date on it, it has a uh, they could they could enroll in this one right now. But see, the trick is uh, one of the one of the neat things you can do is. For these courses, like let's imagine that the spring course, it's done. We don't want it on the website for the public anymore. We can just click edit right here. And in the settings here, in the course and search visibility, we can change that to hidden. And what that is going to do is when somebody goes to to the website, they can't see that course because it's hidden. It's it's already passed. We didn't want to delete it. We want the people who bought it before to still have access to it if that's what we wanted them to do, but we only want them to be able to buy the next season's course. So if I go back over here and we back out here and go to the front end of the website, you know, this user, because they still enrolled, they still have the access because they enrolled in the course. So, um, and then if we look at the class ca calendar here, you know, we can see the, the upcoming events and uh, see, see what's coming. Um, and then when we go into a certain event, <clears throat> um, you know, there's there's lots of settings in here, and uh, that that we can uh, you know put in more information about if they need to bring something to the class or and whatnot. So that is a quick view on how to do that, and of course we could we could we could repeat these cohorts and just do it again. We could clone it again. And then one more time.
and I'll just use the quick edit feature here. So this is autumn. Update. And this one is winter. And if we look at these, so this is the winter one, so we'll give it the winter featured image, publish that. We could save it as a draft if we, if we wanted to um, work on it, but not um, have it be live on the site yet. But just to kind of give you the concept of a cohort base courses there's our fall image set that publish so now if, if we visit the site you can see we've got our upcoming cohorts um, remember we moved the spring one to hidden so that means only people that are enrolled will have it show up on their dashboard. And that's it. So that's how to use WordPress, Lifter LMS, the events calendar, the cadence theme, a Zoom account, and a Vimeo Pro account to create a live virtual cohort-based online course system on your website that you own and control and i just want to encourage you to be cautious if you go out and you try to find like one s solution that does all of that the beauty of lifter lms is that it's an all-in-one solution that does the heavy lifting of learning management systems courses e-commerce reporting analytics progress tracking user accounts all that stuff um, but then with WordPress and a couple choice plugins like Events Calendar, you can really tailor the experience and make a customized, exactly how you want it, cohort-based virtual online learning environment. I'm Chris Badgett. I want to thank you for watching this video. Smash that like button and share this video with a friend if you know another teacher or IT professional who serves uh, the online learning needs of others. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I have an exclusive resource with you called the WordPress LMS Buyer's Guide. Click the link down below this video to download your copy of the resource. It's going to ask you the five critical questions that you can ask so that you can choose the best online tech stack for your ideal online learning platform. And I want to encourage you to keep learning Keep taking action. You have the power to lift up others through education. There's a course inside all of us, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>